and Emma, I'm going to show you how to document your work uh, underneath glass, not underneath glass, big pieces, small pieces, 3D pieces, whatever it may be. I'm just going to help you learn how to document your things, whether it's using a camera or an iPhone. The same rules apply to both, pretty much. So the first rule is lighting is essential to photographing your stuff. You want to keep it consistent. I like to use natural light. You can see a window, I'm using window light for this shot, or you can use daylight light bulbs. Those are your two best options. Um, if you do have to use tungsten, keep it consistent. So just tungsten, not tungsten and natural light, not tungsten and daylight light bulbs. You just want to have one light source so that when you go in and edit it, all your colors are staying the same and you don't have weird shifts of color that aren't supposed to be there. If it's not far enough away from the window, my window right now is about maybe 10 feet away from me, so it's pretty diffused. But if you're using clamp lights with those daylight light bulbs, you're going to want to diffuse it, whether that's using some umbrellas that you have, or maybe it's using a piece of paper to cover the surface, um, or a piece of kind of see-through cloth, some sort of white t-shirt or something. Any of those can be applicable for this, as long as it's kind of like lessening the harshness of that light. Um, you're always going to have it. 45 degree angles coming in at the work unless it's under glass, in which case you'll want to skim the surface or bounce it off the walls. Just make sure that you have a lot of light because that's going to give you the best image quality that you can receive, whether it's from your camera or your iPhone. I'm going to show you how I like to use foam core cardboard to eliminate the glare overall on my pieces. I like to use a piece of foam cord. This is two pieces taped together and I have a hole cut out in the middle of it and that's because I like to put it over the camera lens. <laughs> and that's really going to help eliminate that glare. And I also put a handle just for my own abilities of being able to hold it while operating a camera. But I'm just going to show you real quick how it can eliminate glare across the surface of a piece that you're trying to document. It. What we're going to do is just bring this cardboard right over top the lens and as you can see almost all the glare is eliminated immediately. That's for documenting work on a camera but let's say you just have your iPhone. Same idea. You can do exactly that and I have this piece of cardboard that I have just lying around and you're just going to paint one side of it black and then here I again have the handle and I have just a hole that's it's perfectly going to reveal the iPhone camera so that you can see. It's the same exact idea. And then you can actually see what's going on in there compared to that. Okay, so this is what my piece looks like with some lights, no consideration for the glare. So it's lit really well. Um, you've got your highlights, your dark tones, like it's even, there's no weird shadows going on, but there's so much glare and unfortunately, our handy dandy foam core trick is not going to come in handy right now. You can still see so many background nuisances. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a large thing of paper and we're going to have a little hole so that you can kind of work your iPhone up to that hole and do through it. So basically it's our cardboard piece but so much bigger and you don't have to have background paper or a giant sheet of paper. You can always use a black sheet, tarps, anything that you want as long as it's neutral and that there's no like big heavy creases or weird shadows going on. Here's the setup. We have our sheet of paper or it could be a large piece of fabric if you don't have background paper. Our camera or iPhone would go right in the middle of the piece. 
And as you can see, we have our lighting set up against the sides of the artwork since the piece is underneath glass. Here, we have the hole that we are going to shoot through, and it's the exact same idea as shooting through our cardboard piece, just scaled to a much larger size. Make sure that you take a couple photos, and then crop to the sides of the frame for your final documentation image. Make sure your setup is close enough to your artwork so that you don't have to zoom in. This would be the end result shot on iPhone. With documenting 2D work without glass, sometimes there can be a bit of a sheen on the surface of the artwork. Make sure that you find an angle that doesn't have any sheen to it, and if it does have sheen or glare, you can always use the trick of using a piece of cardboard with a hole poked out of it again, or sometimes I use some diffusers, whether that be a piece of cloth or a sheet, or I had napkins available near me, so I would use a napkin to kind of make sure that the lighting was even across the piece with no major highlights or shadow discrepancies. When using your iPhone with 2D work, make sure that you get some detail shots really focusing in on the details that you want to have the juror or whoever else see in your piece. And make sure that you're holding your iPhone as close to the artwork as you can so you can have minimal cropping, which allows you to have a large image size and also allows you to not crop in as much. So with the overview, these images are taken on my iPhone and make sure that you get a full image of your artwork, some detail shots, and make sure that you are holding your phone close enough so that there's minimal cropping on your piece. With documenting sculptural work, make sure that you have a neutral background or an area with as little distraction as possible. I'm going to use this empty bookshelf that you all see. And I'll also show you how you can take photos using an old sheet I found as the backdrop. In this setting, I have natural window light hitting these sculptural pieces, as it's best to get bright indirect light so that you don't get any harsh highlights or shadows across your subjects. Having more of a neutral, low contrast setting helps the pieces really pop and doesn't allow for any more distractions. With your photos, keep it simple. Follow a compositional guide, whether that's shooting vertical or horizontal. And you'll want to get as close as you can to your artwork to take these photos. Placing your pieces in the center of the frame or in one of the thirds on the grid don't be afraid to get a lot of photographs and to explore different layouts, angles, and close-ups of your work. As you can see here, these images are all shot with an iPhone and edited on an iPhone as well. Here's a quick setup in my kitchen, across from a window, using a bed sheet that I found. I have it draped across a vertical object, like a box, to create the feel of a mini studio. When you have a gentle slope of a sheet from the top of the box to the bottom of the table or the edge of the table, that allows for a seamless looking backdrop, similar to a photo studio, compared to a harsh 90 degree angle when you don't use a slope. When taking photos with this setup that uses a bed sheet as a backdrop. Again, make sure you get lots of photos in the vertical and horizontal, and make sure that your photos only contain the sculptural piece and the backdrop. You don't want any busyness that's going on behind it, like as you can see the door, the shelves that we previously used. You just want to capture the pieces on the backdrop. That makes it feel as if it's taken in a photo studio. One of these pieces is a white sculptural object. 
where sometimes shooting on a white backdrop, it tends to get lost within the background. But this different color that's still neutral helps it pop more against a different color so that it doesn't get washed into the background. One more tip is that I really like to use Bristol paper as a backdrop. I just open up the Bristol pad to create a 90 degree angle, which in this case works because it doesn't have any seams or lines from a sheet. I use this also as a mini backdrop setup and it's one of my favorites just because there's even lighting across the plane, there's a distinctive foreground and background, and it always makes the pieces look as if it's in a more professional place than it really is, which is still on my kitchen table. Like before, I mess around with getting lots of different shots of one piece, different angles of the one piece to create more visual interest, really focusing in on the shape of the piece and using lines in the background to accentuate those, photographing the two pieces together and in different ways, bringing some to the foreground, some to the background to create that visual interest. And now we have an overview, lighting overview. Make sure that you have natural or daylight light bulbs, consistent lighting, so daylight only, tungsten only, natural light only, and lots of light for better image quality. 2D glass, no glass. Come back layer with black foam core or adjacent material. Get as close as you can to the artwork to minimize cropping and maximize image quality, and make sure your lighting is even among the surface of the artwork. 3D. Have neutral area or colors, create spaces by using empty shelves, sheets, or paper and foam core, and play around with different angles, compositions, and sculptural pairings. Those are all the tips that I have for you today, and I really hope that these tips are helpful for when you want to document your art pieces.